Hello and welcome to another episode of the Gritty Hour. I appreciate you people coming in and joining us uh, week after week. It's uh, it's very nice of you to do. I hope you're enjoying our podcast. Uh, this week we have a special guest. His name is John Hogan, and he's the department chair of uh, Orange Ul- Ulster Boses. Uh, he's in control of the Adaptive Physical Education Program, uh, which is, I guess, under the special education umbrella. And uh, we certainly welcome you to the Gritty Hour, John. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. We're honored to have you. So what I really wanted to discuss, John, and this is what I'm interested in, I think I told you right before we started recording, that we've had a number of uh, teachers and professors on our podcast in the past, and what always came up in the conversation was the challenges of dealing with the pandemic in terms of teaching and relating to students. So that piqued my interest, and I know you're... uh, I know you're... um, on the on the uh, adoptive physical education side, and I, I think that's even more of a challenge than some of the other professors we're dealing with. Uh, it's not, you know, you can't teach uh, physical education over the Zoom call, so I, I know the challenges are there, and I was hoping you could inform our audience uh, what you had to deal with during the last couple of few, two, three years already. Well, in the beginning, like with everyone else, it was definitely, uh, you know, a learning curve, especially the technology, especially, you know, how am I going to be able to reach my students, you know, in an effective way, still make them feel that movement, even though now that you're in a confined space, you're at home, you can Mm -hmm. still do that and, and try to be positive and continue to, you know, not become a couch potato, you know, especially in the, in our society nowadays where we're very insular and we're so you know easy to be distracted with with the with you know video games and and TikTok and that's a that's been a I, I use I utilize that I told them to go ahead because that's the movement you know it's a it's an app that uh, you, you do a little short even eight to 20 second dance uh, but on the other hand you know with these other social media apps and whatnot that the kids are using, you know, they spend all day just, just on their phones or on their computers and, and you know, and, and YouTube and just watching. It, it's just totally, it's just, there's no output. It's all input, input, input into their brain. So definitely moving is important to get that brain, you know, functioning. And as you know, you know, a healthy mind and body goes hand in hand. Right, and uh, has that been, I'm assuming that's been exacerbated, what you just described, because of the pandemic, as people spending even more time at home, on the couch, online, so that's even more of a challenge for you. It was, it was, and, and, you know, each teacher had to set up their own Google Classroom, so me having, you know, especially in the area of, of uh, being a special, I had over 150 to 200 students, on, you know, in my class. So, and a wide diversity of students. So mm-hmm. I had to make sure that the assignments that they were given were attainable, you know, that, 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 that in the beginning, I did not want to stress them out with, you know, these long egregious, you know, uh, reports or, or things as such. I utilize a lot of uh, videos from YouTube, you know, various uh, age appropriate videos that uh, could motivate them in doing various workouts, you know, even just a simple, you know, five to, to 10 minute workout, at least to, to see how they can get up and move in a small space. So, you know, virtual learning was a you know, an anomaly for, for all of the educators, you know, within the world. I mean, the, the, uh, obviously, how, how do we teach now? You know, you would think it would be futuristic from the Jetsons and things that we saw growing up, and now it's really happening. So having these kids trying to engage them and get them on a schedule, you know, is, was, was very difficult in the beginning. And, 
having them have the resources uh, and, and unfortunately, you know, many, many uh, families uh, that people, you know, it was brought to light that they didn't even have internet. They didn't have the economic, you know, resources to even have that. How, how do we ask a child to learn virtually and then they cannot because they, it's out of their hands? Right. And that was very, you know, stressing and very frustrating, you know, uh, and thank goodness, you know, I know some companies try to do some hot spots and whatnot. And then also as the pandemic, you know, extended itself, we did try to have parents come in at our school where they could come get a, a Chromebook for each of their children. So, and that was another very, you know, vile, again, you know, something, again, the politics, you know, uh, or, or in life, when something tragic happens, then finally some resources are found. You know, kids, every kid in America should have a Chromebook from their uh, school district, you know, in this new age coming about. So that was great that once all the kids got a Chromebook that, that needed one, they, they, they got them, you know, and then we could move forward even more with, with what, uh, you know, lessons I could provide for them because now they had the resources to, to, to provide, you know, it's just like asking a child to go to school with a backpack empty and the school having nothing to put in the backpack. Right. So it, it was, uh, you know, it was a learning curve for the students and the staff. I learned from them. They learned from me. Some of the, you know, my own, my own child was with me and uh, she could help me with the technological parts of, of sharing two computers and and just just engaging the, the the students and trying to show them and just even even like using sports highlights or if that was the activity we were trying to talk about just engaging them however i could to to get them to just uh to be valued to, to understand that we can still move. It's it's a pandemic, but I can still go for a walk. You know, as long as if I have a mask and I keep social distancing. If it's a nice day, it, 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 in the beginning, of course, we did inside. You know, and it depends on the weather, and it depends on their location, and you know, just giving them a fitness log, a fitness and nutritional log was very important that we developed that that to see what they were. Uh, eating and what activities they could do at home and sent them, uh, you know, via, via the Google Classroom, uh, a myriad of, of different activities and different calisthenics uh, and music. Music was very important too. Uh, I did my thesis with, with uh, how music affects us, you know, and our moods and our body and obviously with, with you know, working out, you work out to, to uh, Mozart, uh, that's one thing. You work out to, to uh, you know, the, the eye of the tiger, that's another. So those those things try to let them find their music and even them putting together, you know, a musical, you know, list that, that, that they found and they would share it with me and, you know, what was upbeat and like how to maybe start with a low, you know, a slow song in the beginning to, to warm up a little bit. And even if it was just 20 minutes, that was amazing. If I got 20 minutes of movement from mm -hmm. the, the show uh, and, and, you know, using music to, as a motivator, you know, using music as a motivator was, was a technique you've always used that my population. Is that a technique you've always used even pre pandemic? Cause that's an interesting uh, aspect of, you know, physical therapy and just, phys you know, physical teaching yes music music to start off you know the period you know it can be a gloomy day and you have a nice upbeat song you know um you know and especially through through the decades of my <laughs> teaching you've had to change you know there's kids bop which which has all these different you know artists that are in the now you know and mm -hmm. that's that's what you have to stay on top of you have to as a as as an educator you just can't get run down into the doing the things that you've started 20 years ago that's not going to work now you yeah. have to be able to be on the cutting edge and you have to be willing to you know find things that continually motivate motivate children and and it's in the pandemic 
you know, unfortunately, the the rate in the special ed, you know, sector was 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 very difficult because they they're they have everybody has their own needs even in the general population, but especially with dysfunctional families, with their myriad of of health and psychological and medical and physical handicaps, you know, having structure and you learn from your own environment and having that structure of going to a school and then you you have this schedule. Obviously, we all remember that in school and you followed that schedule. That schedule, you know, got you through that day. And now we have to implement a schedule at home. But if there's only one computer and you have three other or two or three other siblings, how do you share that one computer? You know, so, so families had to deal with that. We had to be very flexible, which is important. And just had to have the student feel that, you know, if I can get just a little bit of something in the beginning, that's better than nothing, yeah. you know? And, and that's, that's how you had to, had to tread lightly in the beginning of, of the pandemic. And as it grew, you know, the, the, we could add more, more lessons, more, more challenges, more, you know, assignments that they were required to, to, to turn in. You know. I, I get the feeling because uh, you've been you've been a teacher. How long have you been teaching? I've been teaching about twenty seven years now. Wow, six years. God bless you. I get the feeling you've used music in at least in this aspect of your teaching role through most of that twenty seven years. Well, my first two years uh, I was in the state of Florida, and um, that was a general ed middle school. But once I got up here into the Northeast and I got my master's in special education. I knew I was doing adaptive. I was working now at an adaptive setting at a special education center and started understanding like these students, you know, with maybe Down syndrome or with other uh, disabilities, you know, they just wouldn't move as, as fluently and as with as much excitement when I just told them, you know, okay, start walking and then jogging and then skipping all these different locomotor movements in the, in the elementary ages. And then, then I said, well, let's put on some music, you know, let's, let's put on some music and, and see, you know, you know, it's just a, you know, you just see the reaction and they really, really loved it, you know, and they really just, and, and, and not only the students, that within this population also you have a lot of uh, we call them paraeducators and, and they are uh without them we can't do our job um they're an amazing group of, of of people and what they do is 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 uh you know beyond and above you know their pay grade you know and and just them too seeing their spirit and they were enjoying it too, you know, and they, and, you know, you play some older songs for, for the, for them and get those songs in there every once and now. And, and then the spirit of the, of the, of the gym, you know, of the space is, is positive and it's uplifting. And then you can, you know, um, get, get them started with, with a slow song and then you know, ratchet it up and then to a real fast fast paced up tempo song where everybody's running in the room and then you slow it down with like a real, slow song that just brings everybody back down and you can do some stretching and then everybody's you know got those ants out of their pants and then you know you can ask them and and direct them to do more things you mm -hmm. know that, that they can attain you know the, the the population a lot of people you know i've seen children start from from you know with these different ailments and different challenges that you know, they've gone from crawling to walk. I mean, they're five, six, seven, but by the time they're, they're 10 years old with our amazing occupational and physical therapy providers, you know, they're, they're walking and, you know, various, they have to wear various, you know, um, they, they have different, various physical challenges, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, but as a team, we, we, we push them as hard as we can with making them be the best that they can be, you know? That's and cool. so, you know, when, when you're there and everybody's working together for the best interests of the child, you know, 
uh, as we as we would hope could happen in all in all schools in every place. But unfortunately, as you know, a lot of us, a lot of kids just squeak by with splinter skills, you know, and the, right. the ones that are, you know, you are missed are the ones that, you know, we never know. They could, they could have. You know. So John, what you, you mentioned I had a tiger before. I do have a memory of uh, uh, when Rocky came out, I did, <laughs> did do some weightlifting to uh, uh, that Rocky song. What the hell was the name of it? Feeling strong now, you know? Yeah. 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 What was the name of that song? I don't know off the top of my head. But I think uh, I'm at the parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme level now. So, <laughs> but um, the one thing I wanted to bring up was, uh, in as I said, conversations with other teachers. For some reason, this subject keeps coming up. Is um, when you had the full classroom, and and in your in your in your case, the you know the physical the physical training stuff. Um, there were some kids that were introverted and some kids that were extroverted. And during COVID, when everyone on, went on Zoom, I guess for a time, when everything was in total lockdown, some of the ones that were naturally introverted students actually thrived in that environment, um, as opposed to the ones that you know were more sociable in the classroom setting or the gym setting or whatever. Did you find that as well in, in your specific aspect? In my aspect, they, they, you know, with physical education, you had to depend a lot on their, you know, an honor system, you know, they didn't really, you know, the, the, the students who had psychological problems, they, they probably, they retracted further than the other ones that have maybe ADD, ADHD, you know, mm -hmm. um, and also their, cognitive ability you know had to be and to see the different wide ranges of you know i saw a student who was extroverted and was very you know had street smarts and you would you would think that this child was was high functioning you know or, or cognitively and then when you get these one thing that was surprising is when you would get their weekly fitness and nutrition log that their level of of you know the english language was very poor you know uh, some students some students that were introverted you know they could they were a little bit they felt more comfortable you know uh in in the virtual classroom obviously when you're when you're doing something physical you know, it's, and it's there in the gym. You can't hide it either. You're fast. You're slow. You, 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 you have great reflexes. You know, you can throw the ball. Like, you know, Nolan Ryan, or 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 you can throw like Daffy Duck. You know, I mean, this, it's going to be what it's going to be. You know, and now once you go to the virtual world, you know, it, it, it's it's you know now now the playing level field, the playing field's level. You know, everybody's, you know, uh, you really. And and that's and that's how it should be, you know, uh, in the gym as well. But that's life, and that's and even in the classroom when everybody's together, you know, we all know who the smarter kids were in the class. We all know who, you know, uh, you know, just from 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 the test grades that they got. When you looked over, oh my God, I got a seventy. That guy got a hundred. You know, or, or I got a, whatever it is. It is, and and that's part of life. It's a part of life, and. You know, trying to get those kids that are introverted, you know, who knows their, you know, everybody's got their own story. Everybody's got their own experiences. So, and, you know, it's, it's, you don't ever, as, as I try, you know, I just let the student feel, you know, I don't try to pull from them. I just guide them, you know, to be who they want to be and and to try to be on the same page with them listen you got your stuff you know i'm i got stuff we all have we all we all have our own challenges in life but i'm here to help you you know understand the importance of of physical education and the movement and not only you know it was very difficult you know we do team sports we do individual um lifetime sports but just to have them explore 
and ask them, you know, I even put out there, you know, what is, can you, can you invent your own sport? You know, can you, can you invent something that hasn't been done yet? And we, you know, we did a, we did a good month on that. And uh, we did different, like if you could play a sport in a, in a different country, what sport would that be? Just getting them, getting them to, to be creative and, and creative and our, our, what I've seen in all my years of education that the creativity, especially now is, is worse than ever. Because again, back to the whole, you know, now we're in this technological age where it's all input, input, input. Once you hand a child one of these, once you give a child a phone, creativity has gone. You know, once, once that world is, is, is given to them, and then it's all becomes, you know, now I'm not going to say that there isn't, you know, the digital, you know, ability to make cartoons now and art. There's, there's many things that, that digitally that, that enhance the mind, but, and in, in a younger child, and, and even as they develop, you know, the more opportunities they have to be creative and to explore and to, you know, just dream, dream, just dream of something it is, is uh, so important. And I try to challenge them, you know, on a weekly basis to, to, to be creative and, and how can we make a difference? You know, how, how can, or why, how, op ask open-ended questions and, and, and let them be heard, you know, let them be heard. Well, the one the one thing I was going to ask you because you mentioned team sports. Are are you in a coaching position as well, or do you direct like a an athletic um, program for team sports? We have had um, some Special Olympic teams. Unfortunately, uh, with COVID and all that, and there was a former uh, teacher slash coach who was very involved she she retired so that program we're trying to get back started up but we have had at our school a jv basketball team mm -hmm. and it's the only one in the state of new york and we've had it at our school for about 30 30 plus years mm -hmm. and having that is just such an amazing experience yeah in in way in ways that that one can only experience firsthand yeah. these students never been on a team before yeah. in their life yeah and they're currently i teach fifth grade through the 12th grade so this is a jv team that's mostly ninth through 12th and these students were 14 15 you know 14 through 18 never some of them and most of them have never been on a team before because they haven't had the the resources again back to that they haven't had a, a, a parent or, or even adult figure to bring them the little league when they were a kid you know or, or bring them to you know uh, any type of recreational sport so so right there is an amazing concept that they're finally a part of something you know being adolescents you know is you just want to be a part of something you know and now again with and that's team sports sports is is so vital and not only you know on, on that aspect but anything even if they got a, a, a young mind can get into uh, the band get into drama get into you know the debate club get into and there's you know rotc it because the feeling of wanting to be belonging to something is still in adolescence is 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 is, is very strong and especially in the special education world you know where a lot of the students whom are are classified and whatnot they're really ostracized you know in their communities um and their families sometimes you know they really don't want to bring them up because they might feel that they're going to be embarrassed or they don't know if they if the league can meet their needs you know and so the one thing with the the basketball team that we do provide is it provides a safe learning environment and one that where it's it, there's many challenges and there's many experiences and boy could i tell you some experiences 
from coaching that team. Mm -hmm. And 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 uh, are some of the are yeah. some of the students uh, like wheelchair bound and on the JV we've had kids that have had uh, cerebral palsy that have you know um, wear braces and things as such. Right. We had a kid you know that and would shoot the ball and fall fall to the when 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 he shot it, he would fall every single time he'd fall on the floor like a push up and pick himself up and get get back down going down on the floor you know so uh kudos to that young man and you know we have a lot of the the behavioral you know students who 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 have you know some some of them have very severe anger issues and 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 have to really manage them through being on a team and it it, it is very stressful at times but in the end they, they once we we let them each know and everybody knows that we're you know a team means you know people are gonna make mistakes people are gonna have a great day sometimes you're gonna have a bad day that's just like in life right know? and we're gonna work together we're gonna work together through this and you know it's okay it's okay to fail any kid doesn't like to but it happens you know and, mm -hmm. and i try to you know we show them show them clips you know on on a ipads of these these men and women that get paid millions of dollars and they can't you know make a free throw yeah. <laughs> so i've it, seen that it, it, for, for a fall when they're shooting too so you know but well, kudos to the kid for getting back up that's the that's the uh, telltale sign to getting back up on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Is yeah. this inter, inter, what's the term I'm looking for? Uh, really, uh, intramural or do you have other schools? Yeah. But, well, the, the, the team that I coach there, we actually go and play other, you know, general ed schools and, and it's, we've had some great experiences and, and sometimes we've, we, we've, uh, you know, just, had some, you know, you have, some, you have your good games, you have your bad games. You have some kids that get a little too hot headed. They got to take a break. You know, we try to explain to the referees and the referees are really understanding and the other coaches understanding and, you know, you move forward. You what about the other forward. students of that age? Are they understanding as well? Some are, um, you know, it depends on the, the team every year, you know, your team's going to be a different makeup. A lot of, schools have have pulled back uh some of their their enrollment because at our school we get the the students who you know from other districts they, they bring them to us and some home districts have really uh kept their students because obviously if you send your students to uh our our school then there obviously there's a cost you know there's a cost for us to to, to educate them and so now at that we're at the end of this pandemic and I, we've seen enrollment we have seen enrollment increase uh dramatically you know we, we have intakes we have an intake of a, of a student and the, the, the kid, in other words if, if they if, if another school uh moves a kid to your school that funding goes with them so that's correct i correct. understand okay yeah. And, and, you know, there's a wide variety of, of uh, disabilities and challenges. We have an autistic program. We have a behavioral, you know, elementary school. We have more behavioral middle and high school. Then we have a, you know, where you're developmentally delayed. Um, we have a different, you know, uh, school, school for that from the elementary and, and, and high school. So it's a, it's a, it's a large facility meeting the needs of the students and so uh, let me ask you a question uh it's march as we're recording this march 29th 2022 what uh where do we stand in terms of in-person versus zoom now well we're not even obviously there you know there was tape in the hallway there was, there was these visual you know uh signs keep your distance you know all that's off the you know hallway things are back more to normalcy uh you know we're going to start using the cafeteria so you know it, it's it's a way in which the the you know we're looking 
towards towards the light and not not running away from it. And the the, the virtual is still a viable need because there are especially in you know the the even in the general ed setting where where if a kid is 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 maybe you know anxiety and depression or, or you know mental health in our country that's a whole other topic that 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 you could spend weeks on yeah but it's it's been for better or worse it, it's a better thing if i have a you know being a father of, of four children you know if one of my kids was having a, a difficult opportunity but they could still do their work from home you know via zoom or via a virtual classroom now that's now that's an option and we still have kids that are you know that might be going through some anxious times in their life because of you know things that have happened you know that are out of their control you know when a, when a, a parent dies or a traumatic injury or a traumatic you know psychological episode happens to them and so they can still be you know seeing people like this you know seeing their therapists you know it's comforting mm -hmm. so we're, I mean, utilizing that is is, is a positive uh, I don't think kids want to hear if it's a snow day and then we're going to be a virtual. I think they're all <laughs> okay, guys. No snow day. We're all virtual. No, uh, you know, uh, kids. Kids in my school are not saying going for that, and they're not saying, you know, bad idea though, John. Not a bad idea. But I, it's yeah. funny you brought that up because I was going to ask you two other questions. One, uh, do you do you feel like you'll be incorporating this? What like what you and I are doing the Zoom meeting into future, even when the pandemic goes the way. way. My in my opinion, it's an endemic now, but whatever. And and also, do you think what we've just been through over the last three years, going on just into our third year with this, uh, do you think some students will develop PTSD from this experience? You know. It, it was a, it was a, uh, I know ch children adapt faster than adults do or better than adults do, but Absolutely. I, wanted to know your, I wanted to know your thoughts on those two things, but you expounded on it a little bit. Well, it depends on obviously the age of the, of the student and, uh, you can't, you know, virtual learning when you have young, you know, kindergarten through fifth grade, you're not going to, you know, leave your kid at home and go to work, you know, if you still have and that's changed too if you can be lucky enough to do your job from home so school districts have a lot and and in the future it's going to be interesting to see what you know parents rights or parents rights and if a parent wants um you know to to uh i don't know if school districts i don't think they will offer but in short moments if they need to have some virtual learning they will you know and it's going to change technology is if and anything about, unfortunately, here, here's an example. If a school district has me as a phys, and they have, you know, six other, some 10 other phys ed teachers, and they just say, well, you, you, you nine phys ed teachers are gone. We're just going to go virtual with, with Coach Hogan. And he'll, every day in the gym, when the kids show up, he'll be there on the, on a video screen, show, tell them what to do, you know, and they've just saved, you know, that amount of salary. Education, that's, I, I disagree with that wholeheartedly, you know, but what they've been able to do is take obviously one, one educator and can reach everybody virtually, you mm -hmm. know, the number of students that you have, but especially in the classroom, they, they could do that as well. But physical education is phys ed, you know, and, and I'm very proud that New York is one of the only states, unfortunately, that require it for all four years uh, in high school to graduate uh, mm -hmm. with the New York State Diploma. I think more states should uh, be involved in that. But with require, with, require a, a physical physical education completion. Yes, every every you have to have four years of phys ed in order to graduate from New York State. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, but it's definitely a good tool to be able to still utilize if a if a student has has an you know, like i said an illness or has an extended stay from your school uh physically you know but more importantly though i think it should be used in those situations 
because there's nothing like that our, our students are already in this technological and in this you know internet bubble that where the one time they put down the phone and they interact with people social you know humans are social beings humans you know we interact we, we can talk we can you know talk with non-verbally too but but get the students to, to communicate and do, you know, even like problem solving activities as together, you know, team building, those things cannot be done as effective over Zoom, you know, right, um, right. And there's, there's some things that are just in person that have to continue to move forward. And it's been it's been a roller coaster of a ride. I'm, I'm you know, it's very difficult, especially teaching phys ed with masks on, you know, and asking students to, 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 you know, perform physically and then, you know, having to wear a mask and, and getting your, you know, your oxygen intake and CO2 and, and, and are they such now? Are they, we are, we are, we are, we are maskless. Okay. And there are some students that, uh, choose to still do it. Um, I had one, I do teach, we do have a summer school. So I teach grades kindergarten through, you know, ages 21. And some of these kids, they come though with the, you know, the distancing, unfortunately they would, and it's a shame that they're now in their minds, they thought they couldn't be near anybody because of their, you know, what the parents or what the news media. So, so bringing them back into the fold, and I've seen some of them, they still are timid and they'll still keep their distance from you and their mask. Some have gone, you know, half mask, some, some, it would just be a long process for them. And that's, that's, that's well, the very, I would just, the other thing I was going to ask you, do you see maybe a rise in, uh, post-traumatic stress or just anxiety as they do get back into the normal, regular classroom setting? Do you see something well, every, rising, like a rise in that? I don't see it um, because the um, the PTSD, P, I'm sorry. Um, anxiety or, you know, whatever. Yeah. The I think the students that have the coping skills, you know, and have the support around them is, is, is are they're going to move forward. And the ones that don't have the same support at, from home, you know, and that's so important here, they're going to be lagging behind a little bit. But as they continue to come to school and as these restrictions have been lifted and, you know, th they're going to feel that, you know, as you stated before, kids are very adaptable and they're very, you know, uh, in their world, you know, they're, they're thinking, you know, it's just, it's just me and <laughs> there's no us yet. And until middle school, now there's, there's a little bit of us and, and then in high school, it's about we, you know, so, you know, they want to be a part, they want to have that social connection. And I think, you know, with, with social media, I am not, you know, I don't, I'm not as up to date with all the social, you know, uh, the Instagram and the mm. uh, Snapchat, all that stuff. They, they, they are into that and that too, whatever they're getting, the input that they're getting from social media is important because that's what they're, that's what they're learning. That's what they think is true. And to, to get them to understand that not everything you see on that phone, you know, is true. And not everything you see on that phone and the information, um, you know, back check it. You know, make sure that you know where you're getting information is 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 true and not you know fake <laughs> fake news. You know, or yeah, I'll uh, ask you a question that I bet you nobody's asked you. Do you do you see anything on the horizon in terms of post traumatic stress or anxiety among the teachers who have to go through the same thing? Absolutely, and that's a good point, Tom. Uh, we as 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 teachers have been under you know stress like we've never been before mm -hmm. and you know, to try to we have lives and we have responsibilities and we have you know our own things going on as well and it is difficult it it it, it you know the, in our profession even the paraprofessionals 
we have lost a dramatic amount of teachers, you know, that, that have retired and uh, decided to, to take their pensions early and, and to not have to deal with the stress. So we're looking at a uh, future where teachers are going to be in high demand. And I don't think if we don't change our attitude or uh, change, you know, the profession and make it more tractable because of these, these young new teachers are coming in and they would have many other options in the private sector. If we as a nation cannot, I haven't even unfortunately heard this, the recent uh, administration, I haven't heard education being up to the forefront. Obviously we have more important things going on right now, but still we, we need to demand better from our leaders and and we need to demand you know that, that education in america is more respected than it than um it has been you know i, I remember I, to paraphrase something i heard a long time ago the price of education is always cheaper than the price of no education <laughs> you know that's true that's and a good saying to your point, uh, a, lot, a lot of people don't realize, you know, uh, the focus is and should be on the kids as they go back into a normal routine. But a little bit of focus also has to be put on the teachers who went, went through the same pandemic as everybody else did and had to adapt. And, and, and you know, it's also stressful, like you said. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, if anybody's, you know, had children... And even a child is a big responsibility and it can be exhausting. And as an educator, when you have 20 to 40 in a class, sometimes, you know, to be able to, the, to have classroom management skills and uh, to just, just have the overall, it takes a lot of focus. It takes a lot of experience. It takes a lot of uh, confidence, you know, and it takes a lot of work. Bottom line is work. I mean, we just don't show up and, you know, say, okay, read this book and, and answer three questions. You know, great teachers, and we all know we've all had the, that, that mentor in our life. You can put that teacher in your head, you know, who made a difference or who really stood out to you. And, you know, that teacher was, was dedicated and that teacher was, was focused on making a difference. That's what all educators, you know, really... We don't, we don't get into it for the money. We get into it for the purpose of making a child's life the best it can be, you know, educationally. And in my, my field, you know, physically and, you know, educationally, if I can combine those two. Mm -hmm. And I think we need more emphasis in America on finding great teachers and, and, and um, making sure we recognize them more. Because it, back then, this is, you know, when a child that's changed a lot when a child got in trouble at school and the parents supported the school supported like okay so what did johnny do here you know okay well when he gets home he's gonna you know it's gonna johnny's not gonna be able to play his video game for a week well now in some instances and more so than others is a lot of parents are what did what what happened at the school you know the one one of the one one of the most important things that a parent can and it you know as the school should teach is is being responsible for your own actions you know taking accountability and and understanding what happened and moving on and and it's not always you know children will make mistakes it's okay children you know um will act out sometimes it's 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 normal to to have feelings now obviously you can get more violent and that's 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 a whole nother level and that has to be discussed and be disciplined in a different way if we're getting physical and or if we're making threats but in a in a, in a just an ordinary dispute where a child and another child get in a fight over something silly you know both children get disciplined and they move on but uh, sometimes parents feel well what did that what did it what was the teacher doing to let them get in a fight and there's all these different questions just i think the more we we respect and the, the more we have confidence in our teachers i think you know the teachers going to feel better about themselves the more positivity that we are and and the the respect that we give teachers, you know, it's just going to help 
educate your child better, you know, and, and definitely have go into it in a, in a positive light, not a negative light, you know, and, and, and just be thankful that, that, um, that person who's, who's, who's taking care of your child for that whole entire day or teachers, you know, are all looking out for the best interests of, of your son or daughter and that, you know, they believe in them as much as you believe in them. Mm -hmm. and, and if you work together hand in hand, you know, it will definitely be a better, you know, outcome than, than the other, the other way. You yeah. Know, we have to try to, and again, you know, it's, 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 it's so positive to be able to uh, get out of this pandemic and educators, I, I, a majority of them are going to have a nice <laughs> summer vacation. And, and that really is, uh, you know, something that, 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 that we, we all as educators could use. Yeah. And I hope when you do come back from vacation, it's, uh, it's in our rearview mirror completely, but time will tell on all those aspects, but as you said before, and I appreciate you coming on today, and I appreciate you putting up with this internet uh, BS, but um, as you said before, ho hopefully, uh, besides the obvious financial and benefit packages that can be made available, maybe augmented to attract more and better teachers, maybe lifting that level of respect for teachers uh, would also make that more attractive as a career for talented uh, people that would be great teachers absolutely and i mean in other you know we ask ourselves why you know or you know we not in the top you know 10 percent of all the other countries in math and science and you know and you know we're supposed to be this this beacon of of you know uh truth and life prosperity and everything in, in around the world but yet again our educational system continues to fail or lack behind you know uh other countries whereas it's such a shame that you can have a uh you know new york city uh, uh cab driver from haiti will, will be able to, to understand and speak more uh, effectively and understand the, our english language than, than some of our own kids you know it, it's 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 all and as again tom unfortunately it's money and and you know how can we you know as taxpayers as taxpayers demand more out of our uh you know our politicians to to emphasize that you know not it, it's again it's a it's a socioeconomic point as well what it was we're supposed to you know from our constitution equality you know all all men are created equal and it's still to this day that's not true you know and and you know education has gone through a wide range of especially in america trials and tribulations but a child who who is in a lower socioeconomic you know setting should have the same impact the same you know uh materials and needs than that of, of a child who, who's in the, in the higher socioeconomic class and it, it, when we start you know to to as a nation demand better from from our education you know uh, the superintendents the, the ones that really make it happen you know i think education can can really thrive in, in, in a much better way. Well, I intended to have a podcast. Uh, maybe uh, I was thinking of a couple of months down the road having one, and I'd love to have you join with a, a couple of other teachers as well about uh, the decline in the returns of our education system since the inception of the Department of Education, which was I think in the in the late seventies. There's been a remarkable. Uh, a decline in the results we're getting out of it since the federal government got involved. But that's, I could spend another hour talking about that. And I want to educate myself a little bit more about the subject before I expound on it. But I have a gut feeling one has something directly to do with the other. But um, I certainly appreciate your time tonight, John. Um, you and I, I met you through a mutual friend of ours, uh, Sue, who is your better half. And uh, I appreciate you coming on to talk about this. For some reason, 
this topic has come up often in since we started this podcast, which has been about a year, just a little under a year. And given the guests we've had on, like I said, we've had two professors and one who is a uh, who also teaches in the in the special ed field uh, down in Lower Westchester. And that con- the, con- the topic has always come up about having to deal with the COVID and how you treat the, the students. So I, I wanted to get you on here to to get your aspect from the, you know, the phys ed uh, side of the thing, which uh, one of the teachers I did have was a, a music teacher, teaches piano. And mm-hmm. I that was a unique challenge. They're all unique challenges, but I thought that was especially unique. And I, and I think your challenge was also especially unique, given the, the field you're in. So, yes. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, we appreciate your time tonight. And, and you know, if you want to close out with something, yeah, hit it. Sure. You know, um, thank you for having me. You know, it definitely is a challenge. Um, and you know, it's something that uh, I'll never forget. And I'm just so proud to have the other support of my other, my family and friends and, and my other colleagues. And I know, you know, I did say some negative things about where education is, but uh, teachers, teachers teach because they love what they do. Yes. And that's, that's never going to change. Mm-hmm. Um, as, as an educator, I just know it can be better, you know, and I just wish that, that, you know, we can strive as a nation and to find, find the goodness and, 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 you know, demand more from our, you know, politicians and, and demand better, you know, um, you know, uh, facilities and, and, and provide, you know, teachers still are buying, you know, materials and these things shouldn't, you know, I've had purchased materials, you know, these things are just what teachers are going to do because they, they, they're givers, not takers for the most part. And, you know, I just wish the best to everyone out there and, you know, maybe uh, find, reach out to an old teacher that you had and that would make their day, you know, uh, reach out before they pass, you know, and, or if you're, you know, you could just even give, give your child's teacher a, a Dunkin' Donuts gift card, just, 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 just because to say thank you for who you are, you know, yes, we, we, you know, get paid and we get paid well, but, you know, we're still trying to, to balance you know, any, anybody likes a surprise and anybody likes to be told, thanks for, thanks for the job that you're doing. And, and we appreciate you. And, um, thanks again for this opportunity, Tom. And, and hopefully, uh, what I've been able to give to the podcast is something that, uh, will be meaningful and educational to, to many. Well, thank you again. And, uh, maybe cut, like I said, further on up the road, if you have you and a couple other people in the education field discuss that I'd, I'd appreciate that and i promise i'll buy another booster so the internet won't suck <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries tom if you want to talk about anything else uh, the olympic do- development soccer program or any other topics we we got i've, I've got a myriad of, of topics to uh, other I, things we can... and it's encouraging to know people uh with your dedication are still involved and uh Again, we'll see you further on up the road, John. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Have a nice evening. You too. Thank you.